Hello, my name is Dr. Karen Todd, and I do glaucoma and general ophthalmology at the Florida Eye Institute. Today, we're going to introduce you to the 21st century, a new piece of equipment that we've acquired called an HRT Spectralis 3. It really is HAL from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Today, to help us look at how we can map the optic nerve and retina better, we have a volunteer, um, Lynn Lane, our administrator, which you'll see in just a second, and Taryn from the Heidelberg Company, who's going to do a live acquisition of an image from a patient. Okay, Taryn, let's take a picture of Lynn's eye. Okay, Lynn is going to put her chin in the chin piece and you'll see that this is a painless exam. It can be done on a dilated patient or an undilated patient. The first image that comes up is Lynn's macula or retina. And Taryn is examining it in real time. Taryn can tell us he's got the little hand going up and down and you see the image like a CT scan, scanning across the surface of Lynn's retina, looking for fluid, blood, abnormal vessels that might be there from macular degeneration. We're going to look at her macula. The instrument allows us to lock with a retinal tracking device so that real time, if her eye's moving, the instrument knows it's moving and she's able to take a baseline image anywhere inside the retina. That's especially important in our patients with head tremors who have difficulty uh, sitting still. As we get older, we all have more difficulty with that. This is the image of her optic nerve. It's making a grid and going from bottom to top and making a grid image of her optic nerve. You can see how the arrow is going up. Okay, we're done. And for demonstration purposes today, we are only going to do Lynn's right eye. But ordinarily, we would do both eyes of the patient and compare them. Here's a 3D evaluation of her optic nerve head. We're actually able to come in and break this out so we can see individual layers within the retina itself. So we can see the blood vessels here, the optic nerve, and the virtual biopsy of the OCT allowing us to look in depth at the retinal tissue. The doctors are able to evaluate this with the patient live in the exam room. So for the first time ever, they're actually live able to educate the patients as to the health of their retina and allow the patient to actually see the state of their retinal health. We can also image the optic nerve and compare it in thickness to previous images. And we're going to show you an optic nerve image that's been this is a glaucoma evaluation for the retinal nerve fiber layer and we're actually able to take and lay the images on top so anywhere we're in the first baseline image we can actually correlate that perfectly with the second follow-up exam so when the doctor evaluates the initial retina in, uh, in optic nerve head analysis or in glaucoma and also in retina, the instrument knows how to get back to the same point, same exact spot due to the retinal eye tracking feature. In this evaluation, which is usually part of the printout that's shown to the patient, you can, it's very easy for the patient to see that in each of the categories, in each of the sections of their optic nerve, they fell within the normal limits. The black line is the thickness of the nerve of the patient. The green is considered normal, the red is abnormal. This patient is obviously completely normal. Now stored in the database of the machine are some abnormalities that are interesting and we're going to show you. Fortunately, Lynn did not have them. <laughs> we'll show you some uh, macular degeneration since it's such a common problem and such a frightening uh, word for many people in uh, Vero Beach to hear. 
in macular degeneration, this is Brooks membrane, and you can see that rather than being a nice thin line, okay. that's okay, it's disturbed and it becomes thick and distorted. And they're ab the, these are abnormal blood vessels and the retina is very thick in that area, 448 microns. But in serial analysis, the retina doctors are able to tell if their therapies with Lucentis or Avastin are helping the patient not only by the improved vision, but by the thickness and improvement in the OCT on the HRT machine. So you get an objective improvement in the patient with your therapy. This is a 3D analysis, Dr. Todd. You can explain well, picture here. This is this is a fluid filled uh, lump, um, what you'd call a pigment epithelial detachment. Fluid in general is bad. Um, it causes poor vision, and this is subretin. This has subretinal fluid and also retinal fluid underneath Brooks membrane, and both of those things are abnormal. So the retina doctor. That's why the retina has got a big hump in it, and if the retina is not flat. The patient's not seeing well. So the doctor would intervene, giving some kind of therapy, and follow to see if their therapy is effective by following the um, OCT in this case. Okay, this one was still normal, even though the optic nerve had a thinning in this area, but it still will allow us to follow because this is dipping down towards the abnormal area. This patient had angioid streaks. So we're excited for our patients to have the opportunity to benefit from this technology and we're also excited to be using it ourselves. And we invite anyone who would like to come and see what we're doing at the Florida Eye Institute with all our new technologies to uh, come by and we'll give you a tour anytime. Thank you.